The Heaviside cover-up method is named after the English physicist Oliver Heaviside. This approach is one possible alternative in determining the coefficients when performing the partial fraction expansion of a rational function. Suppose that the generic example here, h of s. This function contains q of s in the numerator and both the non-repeated pole p1 and the repeated pole p2 in the denominator. Keep in mind that the order of the numerator qs should be less than that of the denominator. Otherwise, we must perform an extra division step before continuing the expansion. Here, the partial fraction expansion can easily expand a complex fraction into a sum of simpler fractions with coefficients of a1, k1, all the way to kr. Each of these coefficients can be obtained as follows. It is clear that the very first coefficient is a. This represents the non-repeating root p1. The very last coefficient is kr. This represents the highest order repeated root p2. Both are relatively easy to find as shown here. However, to find the coefficients k1 all the way to kr minus 1, which represents the repeated roots with lower orders, require differentiation with respect to s. The order of differentiation is dependent on the exponent of the denominator, as shown here. Let's take now a simple example. Find the inverse Laplace of f of s. Here the partial fraction expansion can easily expand f of s into a sum of simpler fractions with coefficients of a1 and a2 respectively. Simply use the cover up technique where you cover up the s and the denominator and evaluate the fraction at the value of this pole which is zero in this case. The same procedure applies to find the coefficient a2. Now we found a1 and a2, we can rewrite f of s as a simple fractions and use the Laplace table to find the inverse. Note that the step function u of t can be simply uh, removed and the whole Laplace inverse function can be uh, presented at time greater than zero. This is a simple example where the Laplace table is straightforward to use. However, you could verify the partial fraction using the residue function in MATLAB. To do this, first we need to take a note of the coefficients vectors of the polynomials representing the numerator and the denominator. You can use the residue function now as follows. You will notice that the letter R represents the residues, P represents the poles, and k represent the direct terms. So as long as your denominator order is higher than that of the numerator, the k will be always empty. This means there are no direct terms. However, if the vector k is not empty, then you need to add those terms to the expansion. Please note that the first value in the residue vector r corresponds to the first value in the pole vector p. So in this case 0 0.5 corresponds to the first pole of minus 2. The second value 
and the R vector correspond to the second value in the pole vector. In the coming videos, we will uh, discuss examples with repeated real roots, uh, complex roots, and combination of repeated and complex roots.